Let's use Dirac notation to square the Hadamard gate. In the previous video in the quantum mechanics playlist, I defined the Hadamard gate in terms of the Pauli matrices. Here we have Pauli X and Pauli Z. If we take the sum of Pauli X and Pauli Z and then divide by the square root of 2, we will have the Hadamard gate. The Pauli X gate is responsible for bit flips, and the Pauli Z gate is responsible for phase flips. If we take the sum, then we get this Hadamard gate, which allows us to translate between the language of bit flips and the language of phase flips. We do this by moving from the Pauli Z eigenbasis to the Pauli X eigenbasis. And we can move back as well. This Hadamard gate is Hermitian and it is unitary. If we take the square of this gate, we should get the identity operator. And in this video, we're going to show why taking the square gives the identity. We're going to do it in two separate ways. The first way is with Dirac notation, and the second way is with matrix multiplication. So first, let's examine this definition over here. We have a definition in terms of ket bra combinations. There are four terms over here. These first three terms all have a coefficient of plus one, and this last term has a coefficient of minus one. And there is also this factor out the front of one over square root of two. One important thing I want you to remember is that H in this context is the Hadamard gate, but in other contexts, it could also mean the Hamiltonian, or it could also denote a Hilbert space. So we're not using H to denote a Hilbert space, and we're not talking about the Hamiltonian of a system here. We are talking about the Hadamard gate. So that is what this capital H denotes. This Ketbra combination and this Ketbra combination are equivalent to the Pauli Z gate. These are both diagonal entries if we were, put, if we were going to put this in a matrix representation in the Pauli Z eigenbasis. So that's these two terms. These middle two terms, the 0, 1 and the 1, 0, they are equivalent to the Pauli X operator. And this is where the bit flip comes from, and this is where the phase flip comes from. So now let's take this definition and apply it twice. If we apply all of this twice, what's going to happen to the constant out the front? Well, it's going to get squared, so we're going to have one half. And if we apply all of these guys twice, it's going to give us 16 terms. So this term is going to be applied to all four of the terms, and that's actually what we see in the first row. So we have this 0, 0 ket bra, and it is being applied to all four of the combinations. Then in the next row, we see 0, 1 being applied to all combinations, and then 1, 0 being applied to all combinations, and then finally 1, 1 being applied to all combinations. It is important to keep track of the sign. Anytime we have one combination of this 1, 1, we will have a minus sign. But if we have no uh, combinations of 1, 1, then we will have no minus sign, it will be a plus sign. And if we have two combinations, if we apply this twice, we will get back to a plus sign. So that explains this plus sign over here. This plus sign is the consequence of two minus signs. And all of these guys are the consequence of one minus sign. So that's minus, 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 and minus, minus, minus. If we examine these two ket bra combinations, we can see that if you put a ket bra and a ket bra next to each other, the middle becomes a bra ket. So we have a bra ket in the middle of these two ket bra combinations. A bra ket is Dirac notation for the inner product. So this over here is the outer product. Ket bra is the outer product, and that allows us to construct an operator which acts on states. But a inner product over here is going to evaluate, and that in general is going to give us a complex number. But we're taking the inner product of some very special states. These are the computational basis states, and they have been chosen to be orthonormal. So if we take the inner product of any of these states, we're either going to get one or zero. We're going to get zero if the states are different, and we're going to get one if it's the same state. So in this case over here, we have 0, 0, that's the same state, 
that evaluates to 1. And that happens here as well. We have 0, 0. It's the same state. It happens here where we have 1, 1 and 1, 1. And over here we have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 and 1, 1. So in total, there are eight combinations which give us a non-zero answer. All of the other combinations have either 1, 0 or they have 0, 1. And that is going to evaluate to give 0. So that inner product evaluates to 0 because those two computational basis states are orthogonal to each other. So I have underlined in red the only non-zero contributions. And I've also uh, written them down here with all of this stuff disappeared. So all of the inner product business has just been evaluated, and that's given 1. So then all we have to do is take the catch over here and the bra over here, put them together, and that gives us a new catch bra combination. So this gives us 0, 0. So we have the 0, 0 catch bra combination. Then we get a 0, 1 combination over here. That's 0, 1. And then we have 0, 0 again. That's this combination. And over here we have minus 0, 1. So that's minus 0, 1. And finally, we have this bottom row, which comes from 1, 0 over here. That's 1, 0. Then we have a 1, 1. That's this one over here. Then we have minus 1, 0. And finally, the last one is 1, 1. So we have 1, 1 over here. I want you to notice that anytime we have a mixed term with 0, 1 or 1, 0, that's actually going to cancel because we have a plus sign over here and a minus sign over here. So this plus and this minus cancel and this minus and this plus cancel. That leaves two copies of this 0, 0 combination. We have one copy here, one copy here, and we have two copies of the 1, 1 combination. And so that is the same as putting a coefficient of 2 at the front. And that coefficient of 2 can be factored outside the brackets, and it's going to cancel with this 1 half. And once it cancels with the 1 half, we're just left with this over here. We have this projector, which pro projects onto a subspace spanned by this vector labeled by 0. And we have another projector, which spans onto another subspace, which is spanned by this vector labeled by 1. If we take the sum of these guys, that is the same as the identity operator. If you act with this operator on any qubit state, it is going to uh, not do anything to that state. The state will remain unchanged. That is the definition of the identity operator. You can see that this takes a lot of work. You have to write down a lot of kets and bras, and you have to be very careful and evaluate inner products. So for this case, it's actually simpler to write the matrix representation of the Hadamard gate and then just to perform matrix multiplication. So if we were to write this definition in terms of its matrix representation, we would see a factor of 1 over the square root of 2, and then we would see this combination. And I've just written this combination twice because we're squaring it, and the 1 over the square root of 2 becomes a half. So if we perform this matrix multiplication, we will get 1s on the diagonal, and zeros on the off diagonal. This is the matrix representation of the identity operator for a two-dimensional Hilbert space. So you can see that this is a lot more compact than all of this stuff in Dirac notation. Sometimes it is simpler to deal with Dirac notation, and sometimes it is simpler to deal with the matrix representations. Note that anytime we have a matrix representation, we are doing it in a particular basis. This matrix representation is being done in the computational basis. And the computational basis consists of the vectors labeled by 0 and 1. They are the eigenstates of the Pali Z operator. They have eigenvalues plus 1 and minus 1. The 0 state has eigenvalue plus 1, and this 1 state has eigenvalue minus 1. So it's very important to realize that when you have an inner product, it is completely different. It's a completely different object to when you have an outer product. So this 0, 0 combination over here is a completely different mathematical object to this combination of 0, 0. That's because the ket and the bra are in the opposite order. This is a number. In general, it's a complex number. But for these cases, it's either 0 or 1. And this over here, this is an operator which acts on states. So we've seen how Dirac notation can be used to perform a computation. So Dirac notation is very beautiful and it's very convenient. 
but sometimes it is faster to just deal with matrices, especially when you're multiplying and there are many terms. Instead of dealing with all of these 16 terms, you can just do the quick trick of matrix multiplication to get these four entries in a two by two matrix. We will be using Dirac notation and the matrix representations of operators and states in later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. You can find all those other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.